Welcome back to the channel everyone. So Monica told me she needed some more canned venison for the pantry. So we're going to process a deer right here. This is a deer that Marcus harvested during the youth hunt this year. We're going to do two things this time. First, we're going to cut up these nice looking meat chunks. These are what Monica's going to use in the cans. The other way we package this meat, and we use a lot of it, is this burger. Now we do two grinds on the burger. We have two different grind plates for the grinder. One of them is a rough grind, and the second grind goes straight into these bags. We package up two pounds at a time, and when she uses this in the kitchen, she can either use the entire two pounds, or she can split it in half and make two meals. Now let's can the venison. Along with meat, you're going to need canning jars, lids, and it's recommended you use a pressure canner to can meat. Meat is a low acid food. Low acid foods are pressure canned to get them up to a high enough temperature to kill botulism spores. The brand of pressure canner I'm using is an All-American. It has a metal to metal seal, so I wipe a thin layer of olive oil around the edge of it to lubricate it. I then get out my clean and sterilized canning jars. I begin stuffing them full with the cut up venison meat. These are quart sized jars and you are more than welcome to use pint sized jars if you don't need such a large jar full of meat. I make sure to stuff these jars full and press the meat down. You still want to make sure you leave enough head space at the top. Next I'm going to put in 3 quarters a teaspoon of canning salt into each jar. You can use other types of salts, just know that they might discolor the product that you're canning. Also know that salt is not necessary for preserving the meat in this process. I then take a wet cloth and wipe the rims of each of the jars down to make sure there's no salt, blood, or meat up there because I want the lids to get a good seal in the canning process. Once the lids and rings are attached, the jars are ready to go into the canner. This pressure canner requires two to three inches of water in the bottom of the pot for canning purposes. Make sure you carefully read the instructions to your canner before using it so you don't make any mistakes. Also, the canner I'm using actually holds seven quart jars, but we only had six this time. Once the jars are in, I attach the lid and I turn that heat up as high as it can go underneath the pot. Once it's boiling hard, I wait for a steady stream of steam to be coming out of the vent pipe. Once that's happening, I set a timer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I'm able to attach this weight right here. For the altitude that I'm at, I'm going to need 10 pounds of pressure for the processing time. Make sure you use a hot pad when you put that weight on. Then you wait for it to come up to 10 pounds of pressure. Once it does, you're going to hear that weight start jiggling like crazy. At that point, you will start your 90 minutes of processing time. You'll also turn the heat back down so that you only have that weight jiggling a couple times a minute. You don't want it jiggling constantly. Once the 90 minutes of processing is done, turn the heat off, wait for the pressure to come back down to zero, then use a hot pad to remove your weight. At that point, there's no more pressure in your pot, so you unscrew the lid and carefully remove it and your jars are ready to be taken out. When you take your jars out, make sure that you can leave them in a place where they can be undisturbed for 24 hours. And of course, because they're boiling still, put them on some sort of towel or hot pad. The meat in these jars will be extremely tender and quite versatile because I only put salt in these. 
After 24 hours, you can label these jars and put them on a shelf and you don't have to worry about taking up any more freezer space. Also note, after this cools, you might see some white floating stuff in there. That's just fat that wasn't trimmed away. We hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you're a hunter and haven't had canned venison yet, you might want to give it a try. We'll see you on the next one.